Well, the Fixed Ops Roundtable is now in for a special treat because we are going to go to the headquarters of Quantum 5 and meet with our great friend, David O'Brien, who is the president and CEO of Quantum 5. David, welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Ted, thank you so much. Exciting to be here with you. Basketball time, spring, it's just awesome. And uh, glad to be here in our big glass conference room here at Quantum and and just excited to share things with you today. David, your organization, your people uh, are first class, and um, mm-hmm. you really deliver the goods, okay, for dealers and their results. And, you know, you and I have had uh, many a conversation both here and offline, and, you know, you shared with me uh, your personal philosophy on training success. It's a passion, I think, that we both have. But I, I don't think our audience has had an opportunity, Dave, to hear a lot about you uh, and uh, to have you tell us, and I know you're very modest, okay, but to tell us about yourself, yeah. and your experience uh, in automotive. So if you wouldn't mind, before we get started, just kind of tell us a little bit about you. Well, you're right. I, I, uh, I always hesitate to talk about me. Um, be, and it's because of what you said, which is the incredible team that I've accumulated. I, I've never had such talent around me. So it, it humbles me. Uh, you know, uh, Ted, I think I've shared with you and perhaps even the audience a little bit. I've, you know, I grew up with the son of a dealer. Um, and, and like many dealers, my dad was hopeful I wouldn't go in the business. Right. He, he wanted me to do different things. Right. Um, When I got out of college, Ted, I I gravitated to the business, went to work for a great dealer, Bob Rarman, rest his soul. He just passed recently. And uh, what what a great innovator Bob was in the business. But, you know, I got some incredible mentors working in the Rarman organization in the Chicago marketplace when they first started out. You know, all this stuff about not enough inventory feels really familiar to me because I was selling Hondas at his Honda store back in 1985. Uh, The cars were marked up. There were none in inventory. There was an order board that we sold from. You remember those days, right? And so, you know, I I grew up in retail. I met some incredible people in the training business, though, that trained me how to be better at answering phone calls. And they so impacted me about, wow, you can learn new things and and a a training person can connect with you and change your thinking that, that I just really took to those guys. I had them train my team when I became a manager. My team became the best out of the three teams. So so training caught my interest really early. Uh, Then I went to work for training company, got bought by Pat Ryan. And man, you want to talk about getting an education, right? I went into the Pat Ryan organization in 1990, uh, learned their F&I process, learned how to be an F&I trainer, got to work on, on just really cool projects. Uh, By the year 2000, though, uh, they were telling me I had to move from Phoenix back to Chicago. And I reminded them it snowed there. I go, you know, I don't know about that moving back thing. Right. So I went to work for another great car dealer. That's when I went back to retail. Um, And and again, bless his soul. He just passed in in 2020, Tex Earnhardt, one one of the incredible car people that have grown up in this industry. Right. Um, When I went to work there in 1999, uh, we had three dealership locations with a fourth underway. Those three dealerships were selling 35,000 retail units a year. And I stayed there as their training director and then as their first corporate F&I director, Ted. And and again, I I just got to hang out and learn from really great people. After that, Ted, I, I, uh, I gravitated back to helping humans, right? I, uh, I went to work and became a partner at a company called Predictive Index, helping dealers all across the country. Got a little client called Nissan, who then caused me to travel all around the world, sharing how dealers and manufacturers could understand the humans in their environment better. So all of that experience led me to where I am today with Quantum and, uh, and, and a bunch of great people. David, I didn't even realize what a great background and some big names that you've worked with firsthand. You know, I heard, um, I guess you'd say rumors uh, that you were involved in early work with uh, both Chrysler One and Mercedes Starmark. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about those? Well, for sure. You know, thanks to the relationships of Pat Ryan organization and what became the resource group, that organization was, was blessed that Chrysler chose them. If you remember back in 1992, the advance, the first time they said, we're going to make this program called Customer One, 
and we're not going to joke about CSI anymore, right? <laughs> it's like, we're going to take this really serious dealership facilitators and boots on the ground. Um, we also at Pat Ryan bought Key Royal Automotive Company, which was an unbelievable early mega dealer group. And it was an early group that said, we have to have learning and development for our people. And, and they had these fabulous relationships with OEMs. And we got to work on the early Mercedes certified used car program called Starmark. Um, and, and again, just the culmination of all of those learnings around good people, great OEMs, you know, has just been a big influence on me over the years. Okay. Uh, let's transition, uh, Dave, to uh, yeah. Quantum 5, to today, because I've heard so much about this app that you've got at Quantum 5 and uh, this next generation. Um, and I'm curious, what is it and what is it going to do for fixed operations? Well, you know, Ted, I, I believed that training was ready for a transition. For people like you and I who have traveled the country helping dealers, one of our greatest wishes always was, how do I replicate myself? How could I be at that store more frequently so that these people that I just helped could continue to have my help? Well, technology's caught up with it. So we created a three-pronged platform, right? We built first community because I knew we could build the tech but I didn't think automotive or anybody was ready to just be dropped in technology. Hey, here's an LMS. Just keep learning stuff. You're on your own. See you later. Bye. Right. So I created these roles you see up here called a community manager. My community management team builds a relationship with our learners from the minute they graduated from a class. Hmm. I built this job called a community architect which is this person who visits the dealership and still reinforces in person. Okay. But then we did build this really cool technology that nobody's ever deployed before. It is the front face in our app, which is what if learning could be fun? What if, what if we could layer in some AI and know your performance? How many tires did you sell out of 30 customers, Ted? Right. What if I could, what if I could layer in some AI that read that data and knew to get you some objection handling when people say, no, I think I'll buy them from Discount Tire. No, I think I'll go to the Goodyear store. What if I could help across the suite of your skills? And what if it was fun instead of this test or, you know, video filmed five years ago? What, what if it could do all that was my what if questions. And we built it and it operates. And version 3.0 is launching now, today, while we're doing this, because I waited until March, until we could deliver the absolute best 3.0 version to our dealers. So exciting to be here today. Your, your people are the first none of our dealers that are ever going to see what it looks like inside our 3.0 art and, and journeys. And David, I think it's very smart because as you and I discussed re very recently that most employees in a dealership, you know, we've all got our phones in the, our hand and really rather than have to go to one computer or have one person take the test, you know, we can learn in bite sizes right on our phone. And I think that's, Dave, what you've done is genius in order to be able to use the phone to help with the learning. So uh, I'm really excited about how this is going to work and how it's going to help the dealerships that you serve. Yeah, we, we took a really novel approach to it, Ted. Um, we, we took individual skills classes. See, we don't teach systems like you do. Dealers need the work that you do around systems and process and structure. What we focus on, Ted, is whether it's a BDC person, whether it's an advisor, whether it's a salesperson, or whether it's a manager in any part of the dealership, how do I get them to skill the skills for making processes work? So when, when you're teaching your people things, I look at it and I go, so how do I teach them to build great trust so that the processes go better? How do I teach them to build relationship? So we build a suite of courses and we teach them in dealerships, but they're all skill-based classes. But then what I built was fun. I built human-centric content, meaning I built it so that there's a play loop in it. 
I built it so that people look at it and they go, okay, wait a minute, this is kind of different. And we incorporated everything from questions okay. to a card game. Uh, there'll be a collector card game in there that while you and I are together, uh, there's some folks at NADA from my company that are handing out the collector card deck wow. to our first clients, right? Wow. So they'll actually be real cards that people can play with. And I built in a reward structure for people inside there. So the experience has become compelling. How many automotive training companies have script writers? I got two of them. How many of them have storyboard artists, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I got two of those. How many of them have an art team to go along with all the engineers and coders that make it all work, right? So I just looked at it different, Ted. And, and I got to tell you, it wasn't because I was smart. I looked at it different because a guy you've met who's been on Fixed Ops Roundtable with us is my co-founder and partner, a guy named Ken Herforth. Mm -hmm. and, and Ken's background led him exactly to where we needed him at the right moment. And that background is what enabled us to build all this art and game methodology into learning. Dave, I'm excited. When you say art, uh, I, I'd like you to show us, if you would, and, you know, I see a little bit behind you there. Kind of take us through it. Yeah, you know, it, it, as you see some screenshots from the app, you begin to see the difference in what we did, right? And what we did is we created an app that would have learning that people wanted to engage with that didn't have to be forced because it was compelling, so when you look at a screenshot here from an animated scene, this was uniquely created to be a scene in a dealership. And when you look at then our art, you go, holy cow, this kind of looks like the place I work mm -hmm. and it has environments in it. And I did put a clip in here for you. Let me play it for you of a scene that takes place of a customer who's asked about a new vehicle as he's having their vehicle, his vehicle service. So let me turn that up for you. Hi, welcome to Quantum Motors. My name's JD and you are? Hey JD, my name's Brennan. I'm here because I was out this weekend and my buddy has a really cool Raptor. I've never driven a Raptor before, I've always been a Chevy guy. And I gotta tell you, after driving the Raptor, I'm really curious if you guys have one. I wanna get my hands on one, I wanna drive it again. And I'd really like to get some questions answered after driving the vehicle. All right, Brennan, come with me. We'll get you set up for a test drive and then talk through any questions you have. So that was drawn by our lead animator, a guy named Gustavo. Gustavo lives in South America. Hmm. And thanks to the virtual world we live in nowadays, right? Yes. I have an art team that comes from the likes of having worked for Marvel Comics from the Forza game, which is Ben and his team in Vietnam. We have people who've worked for Disney. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of David, who's the lead in our sound community. Ted, if you'd have said to me, hey, Dave, you're gonna have one person that does nothing but sound. Well, you'll notice in the background of that video, you could hear an air wrench. You could hear phones ringing. You could hear the murmur of other people talking. So we spared no time, no expense in creating things that are not a chalkboard video, right? They're not uh, images bought off Getty. And the response we've gotten is that it really, it connects with the people in today's dealership. It makes them go, okay, wait a minute, this is kind of fun. And what they're learning while they're watching that, Ted, is the skills that move numbers in dealerships. Because by the way, I was really clear on this from the beginning. Ted, if we didn't move numbers, it wasn't gonna matter. You know, training like this had to be accountable for doing as good as you do when you work with stores, right? It couldn't just be fluff. It had to be more. And, and I'm so proud of what they've done. And you're right, Dave. At the end of the day, it's all about profits for dealerships, right? Uh, and uh, I've heard from the dealers who have started using your app at Quantum 5 right now about their profit story. Uh, what kind of results uh, would do you want to share any right now with, the, with our audience today? You know, I put some of them up here for you because I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm proud of what our team has done. 
what our team has been able to do in this process is they've been able to set specific targets with dealers. So, Ted, if you're our client, what we do very first is we sit down with you and we say, Mr. Ings, talk to us about the business metrics that you want to see better. Provide us the last 90 day average on those numbers. And our job is to be accountable to you on a monthly basis for making them better. So when we sat down with a large dealer group that is a publicly held group that gets mad at me if I use their name. Um, <laughs> so if I, if I told you they started us with six stores and then they took us to 20. Wow. And in those 20 dealerships, if I said, hmm, the effective labor rate went up by $15 incrementally, but now by month seven is up $15 in effective labor rate. And you then multiplied that across 1800 average ROs at those stores. Big right? numbers. You multiply by 20 stores, you know why they're sending us to another marketplace to take on another 30 stores. Wow. What I didn't expect, Ted, and I'm honest about it, right? What I didn't expect is to be able to tell you about as much CSI improvement. Across the network of our dealers right now, we don't have a single one we've worked with whose average CSI isn't better than when we got there. We've had some scary good results. For example, 67% of all the dealers we've worked with have had month over month consecutive increases every month since we got there. And, and the reason I think it's happening is because we've helped them have advisors know, how do I create true relationship with people? How do I create relationship that transitions to a phone call when I have to go over MPI results? How do I handle objections in a way that doesn't make people feel mm. slapped around, right? And so it's been a huge part of our focus. We've also seen on the sales side, dramatic changes in helping them create relationship during the digital part of their process. And because they're better able to create a relationship that, that creates trust with people, they yeah. go, well, these people are different. We see show up rates, which has been a very specific measure for a lot of our dealers. They're like, hey, I don't care about appointments. I care about appointments that show. Well, we see about a 75% show up rate on the appointments teams are making now wow. as wow. a result of being able to email differently, text differently, have phone calls happen differently. But again, we, we look at metrics that matter to the dealer and we yeah. say measure us. So whatever a dealer wants us to be measured against, we're not afraid because it's our job. It's it's the kind of stuff you and great trainings always embraced. Dave, there's nothing else like what you have right now on the market. And it's modern training for my modern sales and service workforce, because this is the kind of stuff that's going to be fun. They want to learn. They want to use it. I can see them using it, you know, in their downtime, in their spare time. Um, what is next for you, Dave O'Brien, and the Quantum 5 team that you've put together? I got to tell you, the most exciting thing we're doing right now is the work Sarah Van Tyne has put together on Service BDC. Mm -hmm. um, we're really close to coming back and sitting with you again, Ted, to tell you about a partnership with software that's going to take Sarah's training and word strategies for Service BDC to a place that also incorporates a software that will allow for voice over Internet remote agent management and wow. up to the minute ROI management on every RO that is in the shop because of an appointment made by your service BDC. Sarah has wow. put together an incredible opportunity for dealers who want to say, okay, I want retention. I want my customers to have great experiences. I want I want people not lost on hold. Mm. You put that whole package together and add in employees are hard to get. Some of them want to work remote. And now you have a software that will combine telephony with remote capability for a BDC manager. 
it, it is the most exciting thing we're working on, and we're not telling anybody when it comes out except Ted Ings. But we'll tell <laughs> everybody else after we tell you. All right. So I, I'm going to count on I'm going to count on you to come back then and tell us about that as soon yeah. as that's ready, Dave. Dave, yeah. you're you're changing the face of retail learning. If our audience, not if, but when they want to get a hold of you, all right, to find out more about Quantum Five, find out more about the app, what you can do for their specific dealership. How do we get a hold of you, Dave O'Brien? Yeah, I'm I'm like the car dealer who still wants to answer his own phone calls, right? So you can call my phone at 480-452-6868, or you can go to the Quantum website, uh, www.quantum5.ai, and ask for information. And, and uh, Sarah and our team and myself, we'll be right on top of it. We're excited to help dealers with everything around retention, profit, loyalty, <clears throat> and unbelievable customer experiences. David O'Brien has put together the entire package for you, everybody, at Quantum 5. It's available right now. Uh, reach out to David, find out more, and, uh, you know, hop on the train to success. So, David, on behalf of the Fixed Ops community, thanks for all you do and Quantum 5. Thank you, Ted. We're so glad to be here. See you soon.